Hello, Pontiac High School students. Welcome to the first half, part one, of a lesson on government and the state. Today, we're going to be focusing on what government does. All right. So government is responsible for many of the things in our daily lives. We experience the impact of government when we drive on the roads, when we call the police, when we sit in a school. These are all aspects of our lives that are impacted by government. We also experience government when we express our protective freedoms, the freedom of speech, the freedom of religion. These are all things that exist because our government has made efforts to make sure that they exist. So what is government? Well, governments are institutions that make and enforce public policy. Public policy here is a key idea, and we need to make sure that we understand what I'm talking about when I talk about public policy. Now, the list of items considered public policy is nearly endless. This is the trick. But in short, public policy is everything that government does. If government passes a law, that law is going to impact the public and therefore is public policy. So when government passes a speed limit law, that is public policy. When government issues food stamps, that is public policy. When government expands the right to vote, that is public policy. That is everything that government does. Now, when we look at government, we look at the powers of government, that is what government can do. We break it up into three essential powers. Government has one, legislative powers. Legislative powers allows the government to form policy. That is, this allows them to write laws. Number two, the government has executive powers. These are the powers that the government needs in order to administer the law, that is, to carry out the law. So it's one thing to pass a law saying, that all highways in Michigan will now have a speed limit of 75 miles per hour, but how do you carry out that law? We need executive powers to do so. We need executive powers to form a police force uh, or a highway patrol that will make sure that that law is enforced. Number three, we need judicial powers. Judicial powers to help uh, exist to help governments settle disputes. So when there's a difference in opinion about what a law states or how that law should be enforced, we need to have a system in place to make sure that we can have answers to those questions and settle that dispute. That is why we have judicial powers in our government. Well, we also have different types of governments, different ways that governments enact these powers. Now, government is one of the world's oldest inventions. It has been around for a very long time. Now, one of the oldest forms of government would be a dictatorship. A dictatorship is where a single person or a small group of people hold all of the powers of government. They create the laws or the rules, they enforce them, and they decide whether or not somebody has broken those rules. And all of those powers are held under a single individual or a small group. Now, in our system, and the preferred system around the world today, a democracy, these powers all rest with the people. It's the people, it's the voters that have these three powers. Now, we have a representative democracy in which we uh, elect individuals to hold these powers for us um, because we believe that they can do so more effectively and more efficiently and in a more intelligent way. Um, that's our representative democracy system. So the state. The state is what our government is going to look after. Um, and the state is the dominant political unit of the world. Now here the word state refers to what we sometimes refer to as nation or country. But we misuse those terms somewhat. We use them as substitutes, but it's not a perfect substitute for the word state. They're not all the same thing. There are four qualifications that states must have, and around the world there are 192 of these organizations. 
that have all four of these qualifiers to be a state. Number one, population. Without regular inhabitants, a territory or an area of land cannot be considered a state. So it has to have a stable, regular population. Now these populations can vary, they can be tremendously different. You can have 1.3 billion Chinese, the most populous state in the world. You can have 27,000 people in San Marino, which is a much smaller state, one of the world's smallest. But as far as population, it just needs to be a steady, permanent population. And both China and San Marino have this steady, permanent population. For example, Antarctica. Antarctica is not a state. It does not have a stable population. Penguins are not people. They don't count. Number two, you have to have a territory. Um, without land, it can't be considered a state. Now, you can have a very, very big state, such as Russia, the world's largest state, with 6.6 .6 million square miles, all the way down to the world's smallest state, Vatican City. Vatican City is a small little area within the city of Rome, but it is its own independent state with a territory of one half square mile. Teeny. And yet it is its own independent state. A half square mile is basically, if you look at the total area that Pontiac High School and the football field and the middle school, all of that land together is just about a half square mile. So we are looking at a, uh, a very small state, but it is a state. But without territory, you can't have it. So religions, for example, a religion cannot be a state because it does not hold and control territory. Sovereignty. Sovereignty is a big one. Uh, each state, to be called a state, has to have supreme authority within their own borders. That means that the government of the state does not have to follow the laws of another government. The United States of America cannot impose laws on Jamaica. We can't do that. Jamaica is an independent state. They decide their own laws. Without this internal sovereignty, a territory cannot be considered a state. We have a um, few examples of this around the world. Uh, Western Sahara is an example of this, where they have a population, they have territory, they even have some local forms of government, but they do not have sovereignty, where the government of Morocco imposes their uh, laws upon them. Therefore, they cannot be a state. Government. Every state must be politically organized and capable of creating public policy. That is, the states have to be able to create laws, enforce laws, and judge laws. When a government is no longer able to control the policy within their borders, they become a failed state. Somalia for a little while was considered and might still be considered a failed state because the government was not able to enforce public policy across the land. All right, that is all for today. That's a lot for us to digest. Today we went through the four elements of what makes a state and we discussed briefly um, different types of government and what is a government. Next time we'll get into some theories of government uh, and the purpose of government, but we'll save that for our next lesson. Thank you for joining me today. Hope you learned something and farewell.